All right, now for the purposes of this demonstration, we need five images that we can composite together to create our line art jumble illustration. And they can be from anywhere. They can be from Google Images, they can be from Pixabay, they can be from stock sites, they can be from AutoDraw, as long as they're line art and they're usable, high enough resolution, at least a thousand pixels, which means that once it's in your folder, if you double click on it on a Mac, it will open up in preview and it will open up at its native resolution, which means the resolution that the pixels are, which means that the pixels in the image will match the pixels of your screen. And if it doesn't fill your screen like this, if instead when you open it up, it looks like this, like a quarter of your screen or smaller, then what you did was you accidentally saved an icon image. You saved the thumbnail instead of the full resolution image. Or it just wasn't a very big image on this, on the internet to begin with, which means it wasn't from Pixabay and you didn't use the, the limit to large images. So you can always learn what the image size is in this preview program on a Mac by going to tools and adjust size. And it will show you so this image is five by five inches, which doesn't sound very big, but it is 300 pixels per inch. And all that matters is the number of pixels. It's a, it's a grid. 300 pixels per inch is print quality. So this means that this can be printed at five by five inches, but screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch. So at 72 pixels per inch, which we see here, you know, when it opened up, is is plenty big enough for websites for electronic display even for high-res you know tvs and monitor displays so just double click on each of your images make sure they they fill your screen and if they don't then you want to get another image now this one's a little bit smaller than full screen because remember i screen grabbed within a frame right so even though the original image was a thousand by a thousand i cropped into it a little bit, but that's still big enough for what we're using. You just don't want it to be smaller than a quarter of the screen. So all of these will work. And then the downloads from AutoDraw are kind of designed to be full, full size screen resolution. Okay, so what is our next job? We need to add our layers in. And we're gonna use Photoshop instead of Photop. So what I want you to do is to pick what you feel is the single strongest image, the single strongest icon, the one you're pretty sure you're gonna use in your finished composition. And for me, I think that's going to be the mushroom cloud, you know, the first one and we're going to open that up within Photoshop. You could also do it in Photop. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to get the open options. And instead of saying open, which would open it in preview, I'm going to open it with, and then Photoshop will be an option. And this is one way you can do that. So my laptop's a little slow. There we go. So Adobe Photoshop, I'm using uh, 2021. Another way you could do that same thing is you can grab it and then you can drag it like you're throwing it away, but you're putting it into the Photoshop icon. And then that will open it within that program. I don't usually like doing it that way because it if you slip a little bit, you could be moving your file somewhere you don't want to be moving. It. But either way, it will open up in Photoshop. It should look like this. We need to check your Photoshops. And if your Photoshop is, does not kind of look basic like this, this is what's called the default essentials view. Go to window and then workspace and then essentials. Click on that. What it has is a very simple layout with layers here in the bottom right corner. Properties here, color here, with some different color options across the top. 
Mostly we're going to, going to be paying attention to layers right now. And then what's nice is it has this little icon window, which is your history, which will record all the things you do within Photoshop, which makes it so you can go backwards that many steps. Now, Photoshop is a beast of a program. It takes a lot of memory. So we have to prioritize Photoshop on the computers. So you go to do that, you go to Photoshop, and I can reset yours at any time to match this. So if it's ever like unwieldy and you can't, you don't know what's going on, just ask me, I'll reset all the defaults and it will be this. But the defaults are a little too weak for what we're doing. So once we've re reset the defaults, like I've done, you go to preferences and you go to performance. And we want to let Photoshop use about 75 to 80% of our available RAM. So I'm going to do 75 here. My laptop's pretty old. And say OK. So a little bit more than the default. Then I'm also going to say Photoshop preferences units and rulers because Photoshop is an international, Adobe is an international product. I want the rulers to show up in inches, not in um, pixels. And then I want to turn the rulers on and I do that by hitting Command R because this will help us understand resolution. Those are all the settings. Oh wait, one more. Photoshop, preferences, performance. So here, under history and cache, it says history states 50. So that means it can only record 50 things you do. And after you do more than 50 things, you're no longer able to undo it, right? So we wanna change that to at least 350. I used to say 500, but sometimes that can slow down machines. Yeah, if it's higher and it's working fine, it's fine. But those are your kind of performance issues. How much, heart, how, how much RAM it's using, how many history states it's recording. And it has to do with your hard drive space, which you have plenty of on this machine, but I do not have on my laptop, you know, because Photoshop uses a lot of running memory. And that's why you want to have other programs that aren't necessary closed. Now, I'm always going to have an internet browser open, and I'm always going to have the screen recorder going like I do right now. That takes up a lot of RAM. So I'd rather my machine that I'm demonstrating on runs a little bit slower than the ones you're working on, right? So if anyone gets frustrated, it's me. Okay. So now that we've got Photoshop set up, I've, I've hit Command R to see the rulers. You can also do that under View and Clicking on Rulers. You'll see the shortcuts here in all of these drop-down windows. So Command R turns them on. And I'm going to look at the image size of this image. So I go to image, image size. This is the, the one I brought in. And it will show me, first of all, the most important piece of information, which are the pixel dimensions. That's how many pixels by how many pixels. And I want it to be at least 1,000, right? So it's 1299 by 974. Now, that's your pixel grid. We can't make that bigger without having the computer invent pixels. So that's why you want high quality image, because when the computer invents pixels, it creates a ring of pixels around the original pixel. And every time it does that, it softens it and softens it and makes it look cruddy, right? Noisy, distorted, and sometimes people call it pixelated. That pixel dimension can also be expressed in a measurement, like the height and width, in inches by what's called a resolution. And resolution is how many pixels per inch. So this image, which is about the minimum we want, you know, for our big basic image, is around 18 inches by 13 inches, but only at 72 pixels per inch. If I uncheck resample, I'll show you what that is in printing resolution because printing resolution is not 72, it is 300. And by unchecking resample, it shows me, without changing any pixels, what size would this be at print resolution? So this image, which is a good screen resolution, 
can only be printed at about four inches by three inches. So it's good for like a Yu-Gi-Oh card, but not any bigger than that. And we're going to be creating images in this class that go up to 16 by 20 inches at 300 pixels per inch. So we're going to be using a lot of pixels. But for these exercises, we're keeping it at screen resolution. It's pretty basic. Now, we're not going to make any changes in that. I just want you to be aware of what your pixels are. You can see the pixels by hitting Command Plus and zooming in. And in Photoshop, once you zoom in enough, it will actually outline the pixels for you. What is a raster program like Photoshop made to do? It's made to give you control over every pixel. <laughs> that's all it does. But that's a very powerful tool. And then it couples that with being able to layer up those different pixel grids. So now we're going to open up another image. And the other image I really like is this string that came from a Pixabay. No, from a Google image search. And when I bring that in, it looks pretty different. So I'm just going to drag and drop it in. We did this a little bit last class. And before I can do anything, it gives me what's called a transform box. And I don't need to hold down shift to lock it. In the new versions of Photoshop from 2021 on forward, the default is to lock its proportions. If I want to change its proportions, as I scale it up or down, I have to hold down shift. So right away, I can start sizing it. And I want to use this string as kind of augmenting my mushroom cloud, right? And you can right click within the transform box and you can rotate it. I'm going to flip this vertically. There we go. And if you hold down shift, you can distort it, right? And if you right click, you can also do things like distort, perspective, whatever you like to kind of get it to be the shape you want. Now we immediately have a problem. What we want is for all of this line art to jumble up on top of each other like a ball of string to look like these examples. And yet what we have is white and black layered on top of each other. So as soon as you put something on top, the white blocks out what's underneath. So we go to our next step. And this is under layers. So the directions are here on number four. When you bring it in, you're going to see your layer says normal. You're going to change that to multiply mode. Multiply mode makes it like a transparency where the darkest pixels come through. Can you repeat mm -hmm. the layer part? Yes, so let me bring in my next image, right? So now I'm going to drag and drop in these hands. And as it comes in, it comes in with a transform box. So at that point, I can drag it from the corners and resize it. I can also click outside of it and rotate it and just loosely place it. All right, let me take a look. And then you're going to hit return. OK, so I am placing my hands. I don't need to know exactly where they're going to go yet, but I can kind of approximate it. And then I have to hit return. And then I'm going to change it from normal mode to multiply mode. So I can start to see how they overlap with each other. So the layer mode is in the layer window above it. And this is true in Photo P as well. So it will come in as normal, which is just like a, think of it like a fully opaque photograph. Oh, I see. Okay. But multiply mode is like changing that into a, an old school transparency where only the dark pixels come through. So because it's on multiply, you see where the blue overlaps, it gets to be darker blue. That's why we're going to change everything to black because black is the darkest pixel there is. So it'll just be a command Z will undo. And then also you can always go to your history, this little icon here, and you can actually see all the steps you've made. And you can actually try out going back in time. 